Hi, Brockton residents. This is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and welcome to the 15th episode of Our Brockton. And again, the title speaks for itself. It's Our Brockton, it's our community, it's our city, it's our home, and we need to work together during good times and bad times. And as you know, right now, we are still dealing with COVID-19. Uh, as I come to you today, we have lost over 400 residents to the deadly virus known as COVID-19. Uh, we're almost up to 12,000 total cases overall and we are uh, actively dealing with about 2,500 of our fellow residents dealing with positive COVID. That's the sadness, that's the tragedy of COVID. But the good news is the rollout of a vaccine. And uh, it's my honor and privilege today to have three really wonderful uh, people, public servants, and dedicated to making the city of Brockton a safer place. My first guest is Steve Hook, director of BEMA, which is Brockton Emergency Management. Steve's no stranger to this. You were here just recently to talk about the public safety building as well. So, Steve, I want to thank you and your team uh, from BEMA uh, relative to the vaccine and the plan on how to administer those vaccines. Do you mind telling our audience uh, exactly, first of all, quickly what BEMA is and how that mission and that organization is focused right now on the vaccine? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks for having me back. Uh, BEMA, Brockton Emergency Management, is the agency responsible for coordination of uh, local disasters and emergencies. So we coordinate with the state and federal government for resources if needed. So um, we developed the, what's called the EDS plan, the emergency um, distribution site plan, mm -hmm. uh, dispensing site plan, I'm sorry, emergency dispensing site plan for uh, dispensing of uh, vaccines. So this plan was developed probably seven or eight years ago in coordination with the Board of Health uh, we have practiced it a lot down at the high school. Um, the site is at the high school. We can actually run four simultaneous EDSs out of there. That's the plan. And we can, you know, we can vaccinate uh, the city, 100,000 people, in about a week if we do it, if we do it, if we have the vaccine. So originally the plan was developed uh, with the assumption that the vaccine would come from the national strategic stockpile um, and they, the government would have the vaccine ready uh, and we would, we would distribute it within a week. Obviously, that's not the case with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's important for, for the viewers to understand, um, you know, our, our, our mission is to have a safe, healthy community for the city of Brockton. That's my mission as mayor and, and all my guests uh, share that vision as well. And you'll hear from the other two in just a short while. But what Steve said is 100% accurate. We were using Brockton High School for the vaccine rollout. Again, if you're familiar with Brockton High, they're color coordinated buildings, right? So the red, the azure, the green, and the yellow. We have used the red cafeteria and the red library, the IRC, uh, to do the original rollout. But what was lacking was uh, a magnitude of, of numbers of quantity of vaccines. So the city of Brockton through the Board of Health was getting, you know, 600, 400, 200 every week. There wasn't thousands and thousands, but um, we were very successful, Steve. Um, you know, on the, the phase one for our first responders, we did 600 at Brockton High. I wanna thank you and your team because you worked again in tandem with the school police and the school personnel and, and Dr. Eno Montessor at Board of Health and Dr. Rick Herman, our medical consultant. And um, could you just walk us through um, the process that had been happening at Brockton High? So the process was uh, you, you would, the Board of Health would schedule for an appointment. You would come in, register, um, and then get your vaccine and then go into observation, right, for 15 or 30 minutes, depending on your medical condition. So. And we have to thank Brewster Ambulance, our partner Absolutely. here, yeah. um, because Brewster had personnel in the library to observe. They also had on-site ambulance. So that's when we had the successful rollout of Brockton High. Now we've pivoted away from Brockton High School because of the hybrid learning. Our, our special uh, interest and special needs students, the SPED kids are back uh, next, uh, this week actually. We're gonna have kindergarten, ninth graders, sixth graders, and then going forward. So, we decided to leave Brockton High because again, the plan was originally to distribute it in about a week. This is gonna be months and months and months extended. So we are now where doing the rollout? We're at the Shaw Center Mayor uh, doing the rollout uh, in coordination with the Brockton Neighborhood Health uh, and National Guard, uh, of course, Board of Health, Emergency Management and Brewster. 
and it's been it's been wonderful. Now, now I will be very frank. We've had some wrinkles, right? So again, if anybody's watching here and they say, "How do I get a shot?" I meet the phases. I'm 65. I'm 75. I'm in phase one. I haven't got my shot. Um, you know, Brockton.ma.us is the city website. You can go on there, and on there is an informational pre-registration form. You fill out all your personal information: name, email, cell phone, address what phase you believe you're in, and then that, that, that list will get generated so that Board of Health can vet it out and then schedule appointments. Now, what Steve just said is important. President Biden uh, and the federal government designated the local Brockton Neighborhood Health Center as a federal uh, designee. What, what does that mean? That means we're going to get the resources, uh, the National Guard support, the vaccines that we need to vaccinate the, the, the population. And it's awesome. It's a it game changer. Is. It, it really certainly is. is. So Great. we want to thank Sue Joss, who's the CEO and president at Neighborhood Health Center. We want to thank Dr. Maria Celli and all the team members over there. Um, one thing that we are working on uh, is, is, is a plan so that the city will still have clinics, right? Because we're getting our own vaccines, you know, like 500 this week. And Neighborhood Health Center is getting thousands and thousands weekly. So if you work in tandem, you work in collaboration, we're gonna be able to get the shots in the arms quicker and save more lives. So I just, Steve, do you have any other thoughts you wanted to share before we go on to the next guest? No, I just wanna say, you know, it, it, it takes a, a village. It's a, a lot of team, a lot of partnerships to get this done. Um, you know, we've been dealing with this for a year now. This is probably the biggest, um, I, I don't wanna say challenge, but biggest, uh, largest cooperative effort that we've had in the city to get people vaccinated. I can't remember anything as large as this with, within the last, you know, since I've been born probably. Well, I want to take a moment as a mayor and as a, a Brock Tony to thank you. Um, you, I've said this before, you've spent so many hours working on COVID, COVID, COVID and kudos to you. Um, you, you know, your efforts have paid off and um, we have to recharge a little. We still have more time to do it. But again, on behalf of, of, of my office, Steve, thank you for your leadership and as well to your team at BEMA. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We will, uh, we will now uh, go on to the next guest, which is uh, Dr. Rick Herman, MD. Uh, Dr. Herman is the uh, pandemic medical consultant that I brought on um, to help us navigate the uncertainty of COVID. Uh, Dr. Herman's efforts have actually been recognized by the state. His daily dashboard, if you go on the Brockton website and you see the update every day, that's Dr. Rick's efforts right now. So uh, we are going to have Dr. Rick Herman join us in just a moment. My next guest is Dr. Rick Herman, MD. And, and again, Rick uh, has been a wonderful uh, uh, consultant for the city uh, during the pandemic. And again, um, if you don't know who Dr. Rick Herman is, his background speaks volumes. Uh, he used to be the former ER chief at Brockton Hospital Signature Healthcare and also at Good Samaritan Stort Medical Center. So, Dr. Rick, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. So, so Dr. Herman, people are saying, uh, number one, what is the vaccine? Is it tested? Should I get the shot? Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Moderna. Could you, from a medical consultant standpoint, could you just explain to the audience the importance of the vaccine? Sure. So, uh, right now, we're at, a, I think, a critical phase with the COVID pandemic. Over the past several weeks, we've seen the numbers fall down and down and down. But over the last week, we've really seen them kind of level off in the city of Brockton and nationally. So this is the time when we really have to keep our guard up. This isn't the time to go out and celebrate that the, the fact that the numbers are coming down. This is the time that we have to really be careful. And the reason we have to be careful is because we're at a critical juncture right now. We have a very powerful weapon, the vaccine, that can protect us from COVID, but we also have these variants that are lurking on the horizon that could infect us all once again. Mm. And so that's why it's so important to take advantage of every tool that we have. And the vaccine is the best tool that we have. And right now we've got three vaccines that are available. In the city, we've gotten the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine. Those are both what's called uh, uh, mRNA vaccines. And the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a little bit different variety, but they all work basically in the same way, which is to get your body to make antibodies against the uh, COVID-19 virus. Now, I know that there's a lot of people who are hesitant mm -hmm. to get the vaccine. And the hesitancy uh, tends to be one, 
Is it safe? It's new. Uh, what do we know about it long term? Uh, is it safe to take? So I can say this. One is that we know that it is safe in the short term. Over 75 million people have gotten a shot, okay? There have been no significant serious side effects that haven't been able to be taken care of medically. Mm -hmm. Long term, it's true, the virus has only been around for a year, so we don't know, and the vaccine's only been around for a few months, so we don't know long term effects. But these mRNA vaccines have actually been tested over the last 10 years. So we know that there are no long term effects associated with this type of vaccine. So it's a relatively safe and certainly very effective, efficacious vaccine. So that's, I think, one of the major reasons why people are hesitant. To, to get the vaccine, not, not sure if it's safe. I would urge everyone, I would say, if you are eligible to get the vaccine, you should get it. And conversely, if you're not eligible to the vaccine, tr don't cut the line. Let the people who are eligible get it. The idea here is that a system has been put in place to take the people that are at highest risk of developing serious illness and death and putting them at the top of the list and so if you're not there yet, uh, wait your turn. The time will come. These vaccines are rolling out very, very quickly. Doctor, somebody had asked me the other day, uh, if I get my first shot, Pfizer, Moderna, why do I need a second shot? Because Johnson Johnson, you only need one shot. Can you just explain to the audience why that is? Sure. So the, the study that was done with the two uh, mRNA vaccines, the Moderna and the Pfizer, were done with two shots. So the first dose is a priming dose. What that does is it kind of gets your body's immune system used to this virus and sort of tells it how to build antibodies. 28 days or 21 days later, depending on which vaccine you get, uh, you get a booster dose, and that really revs up your immune system up to get, to get you into the 95% efficacy range. Even after the first shot, you do have some immunity to the virus, but it's not the super strong immunity that you want especially now where by getting that super strong immunity, you may in fact be protecting yourself not only against the original virus strain, but against some of these uh, new variants that exist as well. Doctor, the last thing I'm gonna ask you is, is Brockton is a beautiful, diverse community, right? We have wonderful, wonderful aspects of different ethnicities in Brockton, uh, from people from Cape Verde to Haiti to Angola, Nigeria, uh, Latin communities. Um, it seems like when we look at the metrics and the data, and I, and I say this with all due respect, you always do a deep dive on the metrics. It seems like a lot of our residents of ethnic, different ethnic backgrounds are apprehensive to getting the shots. And you and I and, 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 and Dr. Monteser, who also is a pastor, we do a call every, every week with the pastors, different denominations in Brockton. If I was... Um, not on that call, what would be, as a medical doctor, what would be your explanation? It doesn't matter what background you are. Why is it so important to get that shot? Why? All right. So right now, it really is, other than getting the disease itself and getting immunity, getting the vaccine is really the only way that you can safely develop antibodies, so protection against getting the vaccine. So no matter your race or ethnic background, uh, it's so important to get yourself protected, especially since uh, certain people, older populations, those with underlying medical conditions, are at high risk of developing bad illness, hospitalization, admission to an ICU, even death. And so that's why getting the vaccine is a way to protect you, but also to protect your family and your loved ones, uh, because you can easily spread it to those that you live with or come in close contact with. Thank you, doctor. And we're going to continue our efforts of educating and inform all Brocktonians, all aspects of our community. Again, I want to thank you, Dr. Herman, for what you do every day for Brockton. Um, you know, when I asked you to, uh, to help out as a consultant, I don't think any of us expected how much time and how this is really mushroomed. So uh, we would be in, uh, in dire straits without your guidance and your medical expertise. So thank you, Dr. Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Brocktonians, my uh, last guest uh, for this, uh, this show of our Brockton is Dr. Eno Montessor, who is the Director of Board of Health here in Brockton. Uh, Dr. Montessor, thank you so much for being here. Well, Mayor, thank you for bringing me alongside of you. I want to, uh, I want to first of all thank you for leading the Board of Health 
I think when, when we brought you on board, none of us expected how much time all of us would be dealing with COVID, COVID, COVID. Um, the Board of Health is, is the local authority uh, here in Brockton. Um, you have three nurses uh, that help. You have a staff as well. But for COVID, um, Dr. Montessor every single day is working with DPH, Department of Public Health for the Commonwealth. Dr. Montessor, we were getting a lot of complaints earlier about how come Brockton's not getting more vaccines. Um, and we're working through that and we're seeing numbers increase, which is great. Could you just explain the process that you have to do every, every week as the director of Board of Health? Because people don't know that. You have to give information to DPH that will then decide how much we get. Yes, well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, let me start by saying that uh, the first vaccine that we received in the city of Broughton was the uh, Moderna. Um, Dr. Herman has already spoken of three. One hasn't uh, been released yet. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just approved this week, uh, the J&J or Johnson & Johnson. Now, whichever one you you um, ordering, you have to place the order by Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and then a day or two later, you get a note, an email saying that you approve for these many doses. Uh, the Moderna comes in a, in a box with 10 vials, mm -hmm. and each vial has 10 doses. So in one box, you have 100 doses. The Pfizer, which we have prepared quite a bit for, because we have invested close to $14,000 to buy the, uh, uh, the ultra uh, low temperature freezer, because uh, the Pfizer uh, is made in such a way that it must be kept at very low temperature. However, it hasn't been made available until uh, the 16th, the 17th of uh, February, where we receive 394 doses. Mm -hmm. So whichever one, you first have to submit the request to DPH and then wait for a day or so or two to get the approval that you will receive this many um, doses for the week and then so this is what we have done and uh, we started on uh, January 4th we received the um, first 600 doses and then from then on up till last week uh, February 22nd which was the eighth um, approval or the eighth request that we have been approved for so we have re received eight shipments uh, to date, which total 3,064 wow, doses, of which we have used uh, almost all except 310 doses. Well, we're, we're, doing, we're doing really um, yeoman's work, we really are. And I think one thing that, just to clarify what Eno was saying is, and, and I want to thank him for his leadership on this, is um, the Pfizer needed a certain freezer. And I said, okay, Dr. Monaster, can you help me find one? And he searched high and low, and there was one left, one left on the east coast of, uh, of the United States. And it was almost $14,000. And Eno worked with our CFO uh, here in Brockton. And we acquired it, and we bought it, and we are utilizing it. Now, the good thing is we have it, and it's our asset. But the better news is that we are getting reimbursed all of that money from the Federal CARES Act. So it was really a, a wonderful endeavor. Thank you for that, Eno. My pleasure. Um, in terms of the original rollout of 600. That was our phase one, that was our, our, our public safety personnel, our frontline staff. Um, how did that rollout go? Because we've already seen those people for the second shot, right? Yes, um, some of them have come because uh, on um, f the last week of February, they were, they already, some of them already, uh, most of them have already come for the second dose. Yeah. Um, so basically, when you take the first dose, for Moderna, it's 28 days, plus or minus two. In other words, you can take it two days earlier or two days later, uh, but you have to, hit the, to take two doses. Um, Dr. Herman has already uh, spoken about the, the importance of having two doses. Um, so once you take the second dose, then you all set. Yeah, um, no, up is, to 94, 95%. This is excellent. Uh, and, Im immunized. And this is wonderful. And again, our whole mission, all of us, um, uh, Steve and Rick and Eno and myself is to save lives in Brockton. Also, Linda Cahill, Dr. Cahill, uh, who is the director of school nursing. Without the partnership of the school nurses, we would not have been able to vaccinate as many as we did. As I said, we are fortunate to have three uh, Board of Health nurses. Um, you know, we have, we have Evelyn, we have Gidget, we have Lynn, but then so many school nurses led by um, Director and uh, Dr. Uh, Linda Cahill. Thank you for that. 
So now, uh, as, as Mr. Hook was saying, we've pivoted out of Brockton High School and we're over at the Shaw Center. And you have been there for hours and hours and hours working on it. What does it mean now for the Board of Health and for you to have the help and the collaboration in almost a merger-like situation with Neighborhood Health Center and the National Guard, you know? One thing I find that works very well in Brockton is the collaboration between departments at City Hall and the other city entities. Uh, Brockton Neighborhood is one of them. Um, so therefore, um, it's very helpful to be able to have partners, people that you can work with. Now, one thing I am looking forward to see in the months ahead, if we could really uh, tackle it, is different ethnicities, because I've said it before and I'll say it again. COVID does not discriminate. Mm -hmm. It can attack, it can affect anybody, irrespective of your class, your race, your age, your level of education, or your financial assets. Um, the best way, the best tool we have to fight the, vac uh, the uh, pandemic is the vaccine. And so I know there are people who, when we talk about vaccine, they said, no, there's a conspiracy. But let's forget about the conspiracy. There has been cons conspiracy in the past, but today we're dealing with a life-threatening pandemic. A lot of people have died, and you've mentioned it, Mayor, over 400 yes. we've lost, yes. 400 lives yes. in Brockton. And so therefore, irrespective of what vaccine, please make yourself available either for the Moderna, for the Pfizer, or the um, Johnson & Johnson when it com becomes available for us in the city of Brockton. That's the best chance we have in order to be able to fight this virus. And, and Dr. Monaso, just, just, that's it. I mean, that's the whole purpose of the show today is to educate and inform and how important it, it really is when you have the ability to roll up your sleeve and take the shot. Uh, I'm in phase three, general public. Uh, some people say, you're the mayor, you shouldn't be. I don't skip the line. I'm in phase three. Uh, and when I have the opportunity, I'm going to roll up my sleeve and I'm going to take that shot. And then 28 days later, I'm going to be back there again. It's that important. Um, you know, my title is mayor, uh, but my biggest job is dad of three kids, and I want to be around for a long time. So God willing, we'll continue our efforts together. I want to thank Dr. Montessier, Dr. Herman, Director Steve Hook from Beamer. I want to thank again Sue Joss and Dr. Chelly over at Neighborhood Health Center. Uh, this has been the 15th episode of Our Brockton, and this was probably one of the most important ones that we've had. So if you have any questions after you watch this, please don't hesitate to call the mayor's office. It's 508 580-7123, 508-580-7123 is the mayor's office. Again, if you need our assistance, we're ready, willing, and able to help you, uh, but also we need to be a little patient because we're still trying to figure out with the quantity that the city's getting and Neighborhood Health Center, how we're gonna do that. But again, you can go on to brockton.ma.us for the website. Again, you can sign up. It does not guarantee you a time for a shot or schedule an appointment, but it's step one. You fill out your information, and then somebody will be contacting you. Dr. Montessor, thank you for what you're doing every day at the Board of Health. And again, it is my honor and privilege to serve as the mayor of the city of Brockton. We're all in this together. As Dr. Montessor and Dr. Herman and, and Mr. Hook have said, it's just so important. So please, please, please get the vac vaccine when you're eligible. And again, uh, thank you. And if you need us, please don't hesitate. Bye-bye.